Ada kulda semoga kau kanak Sen oman samule kanai Hora dai maka pangholo holoan Hora dai oka sombongan No alan ha problema dai Yan manggit ko sen o Tangagaw manubog takday Agapan ha hilingan Bae Garagway is a Lumen princess of a local tribe in Bukidnon in the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. Unlike the popular notion of princesses, however, she has neither palace nor wealth. In fact, Bai does not even own a piece of land. Ba'i looks for the bananas that have just been harvested. They'd sell the fruits to buy salt. But she does not find them. Could they have been stolen? Her mind goes in a whirl. It is a tragedy that surely means hunger for her family in the coming days. These days, banana and salt are her family's staple food. It is extremely rare to have rice on the table. Having been deprived of their right to their ancestral domain, the whole community has been impoverished a hundredfold. Today, they live along the fringes of their land that is now being claimed by a big pineapple plantation. Even so, the threat of eviction has become a day-to-day -day reality. But Ba'i, and her tribe continue to struggle for their rights. Ugsa naminyo pod ko ako naminyo kang Jaime nga irayan ang iyang sweldo di gigpaigo sa among kinahanglanon kada adlaw tungod kay gamay ra gigkayo ang iyang inadlawan. Ang iyang inadlawan ana tag 150 ra unya nga among anak siyam ka nakabok ang among gabuhi on dili gyud paigo sa among pagkaon magkakaon tod mi sa isa sa isa ka adlaw apan malugos pagyud na siya tungod sa among mga eskwela nga daghang kayo ang ipapalit gani di manggid gan ako matanan mapalit tungod kay di manggi ko makatimbang sa akong bana tungod sa pagantiman sa mga bata the plantation thrives on chemicals that put people's health at risk and the natives know it not so says the managers of the land that used to be the domain of Ba'i and her people. In 2005, they were proven right. The disaster wrought havoc on their lives. It's a 20 sa Mayo. Nagkuha ko sa mais. Akong giurap. Gipakaon ako ang akong anak. Nga duha katuig kapin. Gipasbasan ako siya pagpakaong. Kay ingon mangid ang bata. Ma, gutom, ma. Pagkahapon, Sakit yun, di gid makuan ang kasakit. Kaya bisan man kami tanan magid mi naghigda, nagtapad na lang mi di sa kuang ka. Di, di na mi, di na mabakyaw ang pagbakod. Apan, ingnanak ko, ingon ko dunay ay 
ko ang trabante sa paki nga nagduol sa amon on sa man mo nga nahilo man tingali mi kay tanan mang yud mi wa may mila ang gikaon maisra man mo da ang katong panahon nga na lakaw ang mga kauban kay namangita lagi og tambal apan ang akong anak wa gid na libre wa gid taon siya na libre kay siya mang gigamay Ba'i and her clan originally lived between the rivers Tagabulo and Manigay in the province of Bukidnon, an ancestral domain of indigenous peoples. As an aftermath of the widespread land grabbing, they were repeatedly evicted from their homes. Due to mounting pressure by people's groups like the Kalumbay Lumad Organization, in Amihan, Northern Mindanao, the village chief made arrangements in their behalf. But now, with a new village chief, they are being required to pay 10,000 pesos, a price they could not afford. Ba'i could not tolerate the injustices committed against indigenous peoples. She linked up with their organizations and sought help from government offices. For doing so, Ba'i was stuck as a member of the New People's Army of the Communist Party of the Philippines. The story of Ba'i has become typical in the community and elsewhere. Indigenous peoples and peasants continue to lose home and livelihood to big multinational corporations that trample on people's rights in the name of development. In the whole of the northern Mindanao region, peasant families live engulfed by the dark cloud of eviction. At any given day, the land grabbers could succeed. Progressive groups call the land grabbing global not only on account of its scale, but also because it is perpetuated by huge transnational agricultural companies, aided by no less than the government and traditional landlords. The Kampuhan is an exercise of freedom of expression. It is outside, outside the principle. Wala silang ingress na lang. Wala silang na-disturb. Unarmed yung mga tao. Mga laway lang at mga bakba lang nila ang ilahang kung ano na. Why were they violated? Why were they attacked? An armed civilians yan, inatake ng Chevron. Yung Chevron, paid yan ng taxes. Bakit inatake? That's a fundamental freedom yung pag-express. Three decades na yan. In Bukidnan alone, where farmers comprise about 85% of the total population of more than a million, the Bureau of Agriculture says that about 315,164, or 38%, of 829,378 hectares of land are alienable and disposable, meaning these are covered by land reform. Yet three out of four farmers remain landless. The glaring ratio speaks volumes about social justice or the lack of it in Bukidnon and the neighboring provinces. One explanation is that the province is home to nine transnational corporations such as Del Monte and Dole. There are about 50 pineapple and banana plantations covering tens of thousands of hectares each. Big portions of the Bukidnon land are also planted to cash crops, jadropa, cut flowers, and others by an elite group of landowners. Traditional landlords control thousands of hectares of land, including some 356 of them who lay claim to 55,000 sugarcane plantations. Two families control 23,042 hectares of land for cattle raising.
women who bear the economic brunt of the unjust property and power relations endure the worst blues, being at the forefront of defense of every family's livelihood. Marilu Fortin's family is among the 800 peasant households of Paramag Bukidnon who are threatened by eviction, owing to a claim by the Central Mindanao University. The state university plans to lease their land to transnational corporations. Hangyo kami sa kay Presidente Maria Luisa Sulibin nga padayunon kami sa pagtikad sa area. Kay kun hindi kami magtikad, unsa na lang pagpakaon namo sa among mga anak? Unsa na lang kuno pagpiskwela namo sa among mga anak? Kay wala kami ilaing kasaligan nga pangitan kana ra ang, ang basakan. But their peaceful protest is met by violence as the university security troops open fire on the farmers. Six peasants are wounded. Dere kami sa mountain, tapos nag-abot ang mga sikyo na may armado. Pag-abot nila nga halin sa dere sa pelt, Dritso sila, lokso silang sakyanan. Dritso na yun, bunlot sa mong trapal. Tapos sila kay among gimpongan, dritso sila yun silang buto-buto-buto. Gusto ko rin ay naigo naman ko diri sa dughan. Ako umatras ko, matras ko yun, naigo naman ko. Tapos wala na kong kumalo ko sa ang ilang ginbuhat. Previously, farmers have been assaulted a number of times. No one was held liable. On July 30, 2010, for instance, the members of the Dangawan Landless Farmers Association were shot. In less than a week, on August 4, 2010, the protest camp of the Nakagawa Dulugon Farmers Association was likewise attacked by a truckload of gun bearing men. Farmers lay wounded. Kung ako nguna una on mura dili na ako ma-imagine bitaw kung giyon sa tunamo pag sa gubang uh, ang ako lang karon nga ipaabot eh, nga katong bago pa nga mura labas pa nga mga harassment nga naitabo nga diin daghan ang mga nabiktima tung ay 2009 nga diin nag uh, ma, naglunsad mi og kanang operation tikad kalit lang po na mo abot ang mga security guard para mangharas Ang ilang himuon na tanan mga himan sa mga mag-uuma, ilag yun ang pangkuhaon. Kung sa kami, naga, nagkahiusa nga, pag tanaw na mo, nga muabot na ng mga security guard, ang tanang mga kababayan, sila'y mutapok muling ko dito sa among tortol. Aron dili yun makuha sa mga security guard. So ang himo sa mga security guard, kaya dili man silang pumawa, ilang pabuthan. Napatoy isa na mo kakaubang babae nga buros nga na-appeal po nga dihag yun sa iyang tupad yung pabuto. Fisher folk families were not spared by the local landlords. In the morning of May 26, 2011, around 80 police officers escorted a demolition team to evict Fisher folk families in Kitatum, Misamis Oriental. The Regional Trial Court issued a special order in favor of one Velasco family. <laughs> who claims to own the land where the Fisher Folk families live. The municipal board opted to side with the family through resolution number 20, 2009, allowing the commercial development of the disputed land. Without any offer of relocation, the Fisher Folk families resisted the demolition. They were arrested and charged in court. Among them was Adrashon Orais. Magalimula sa mo. Nawagi minahimo. Kay sigig nilang, sigig magilang itulod-tulod nila ang kananang 
nagilatid na mong ina ng apisi. Hindi uh, sila makasulod. Gisulod gila mo itong gipamunalan ang ako mga, sa, mga sakop. Ako nga balo-balo nag gilabay lang ko itong among balay nga giguba. Giburalan akong likod. Nya hasta kong otobang. Nya ang kato akong bata. Nga isa. Nabunog na yung dinaniyo. Nga bagas. Nga yun. Mga buktun. Nga yun. Nga mga pulis. O ganang buwan. Atong among atong pa pag umang ko sa nagtadugo na yung laki gipagbulanan man. Ang mo rin itong gi gidakop din ko. Gidakop misa kung asa to kong pares. Gidakop may magpasakay itong patrol ka. Maniguro sila kay Arun Dilik ko na may makalaban sa ilang sa ilang pagkabuhaton. Ang mo itong wala na yung magkakuan sa mong balay. Kato na nakapatoy ang gisila pagpangguba sa mong balay. Today, Adarashan lives in a makeshift shelter where their house used to be. Determined to continue the struggle, her family has decided to stay put in the community. Justice remains elusive for women like Sichi Bustamante Gandinao, a member of Nagkamamo Misamis Oriental Farmers Association and Bayan Muna Partilist who was killed on March 10, 2007. She was a witness in the murder of another peasant, Dalmacio Gandinao, by state security forces on February 8, 2007. Sichi was among those who were interviewed by United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial, Summary or Arbitrary Executions, Philip Alston, who came to the Philippines on a fact-finding mission about human rights violations in the country. Overwhelmed by the culture of impunity and the state of the justice system in the country, her family chose not to file a criminal case. The impunity, however, permeates the rest of their existence. Meanwhile, peasant families all over the country are daily threatened with eviction. Courtesy of President Benigno Aquino's program of public-private partnership, land grabbing is seen to intensify. Consequently, an increasing number of women are preparing to do battle, determined to fight for their rights. During the Peasants' March last October, Bai expressed hope that their struggle would somehow come to the attention of the Philippine government and be included in the national discourse about development. Barring this, and until genuine agrarian reform shall have been implemented and justice served to all the victims of human rights violations, more women like Bai, Marilu, Dolores, and Adrasyon would keep up the good and just fight. Salama
Thank you.